talk today is about making 5G system an intelligent network, which is an application of artificial intelligence in cellular systems. So to start with, let's imagine you are in a football stadium and you're watching a match. So imagine all the players, they have a very high-tech camera attached to somewhere on their wearing or on their head or something which can actually transmit a very high definition, ultra high definition video over a cellular network. Also imagine that you as well as your colleagues or as well as the other viewers in the stadium, they have uh, a smart glasses which can receive these wirelessly transmitted videos and they can superimpose these videos on top of your actual live view. It would be very exciting to watch a match like this. So you have a live view as well as you can watch images of different players. So for example, from the perspective of different players, how the match looks like. So you can have this video in video in such a format. It is exciting, but would it work with current technology? The answer is unfortunately no, it wouldn't work. The reason is the underlying delay or latency in the wireless communication networks of today. The delay is also just a fraction of a second, but it is large enough to destroy the human perception to see a live image on top of slightly delayed image. It destroys the whole experience, right? So it wouldn't work with current technology. So what do we do? We need to develop a new generation of cellular technology which can at least bring down this delay to a millisecond or a sub-millisecond order. So for that, we are developing this new generation of cellular techniques, the 5G system. What is 5G system? Let's see a very short clip. Five G is the next generation of wireless communication networks. They say five G will be different, but how? Five G will impact in so many areas of our everyday lives and the world we live in. There are five key aims: one, minimum end-to-end -end latency; two, dramatic improvement of quality of experience with immersive and ubiquitous connectivity; three more efficient utilization of resources. Four, reducing network capex and opex by flattening the network architecture. Five, supporting versatile applications via flexible software-defined networks. With 5G in place, we can expect to see groundbreaking developments for key applications in the world around us. For example, the Internet of Things will become more connected, making lives easier. Intervehicular communication will mean safer travel. Entertainment will have more depth. Your social network will become fully integrated. And healthcare monitoring services will be pervasive and integrated. There are a diverse set of technologies that will drive 5G, including integrated information-centric networking and content caching. Dense network meaning 5G shouldn't break, so no more data dropout. Utilization of network context. And utilization of user context for a more personalized experience. In contrast with previous networks, 5G benefits from memory-full and intelligent network management technologies, allowing for faster operations with minimum signaling overhead. Overall, users will have a better experience and networks will become more efficient and profitable. Join us at the 5G Innovation Center. Okay, so what do we see in this video is that 5G will provide a lot of opportunities. But in order to achieve all these facilities, we have to design the cellular network in such a way that it has some intelligence in it. So we have to meet these targets of ultra low latency. We have to design the system with ultra energy efficient and spectrum efficient. So no wastage of resources. Your battery life could be more than several days. And we have to deal with what has been provided to us. The spectrum that is available for communication nowadays is already very fragmented. So we have to design the system to live with this fact. And 
scalability of the number of nodes that this network has to deal with is an important parameter. Because currently we have only our mobile phones and humans who are connected to the internet. But in future, it would be machines, your smart meter, your key, your lock, and many other things which will also require connectivity to the internet. The so-called the internet of things that is emerging. And finally, and most importantly, we have to make this network versatile and it should be able to learn from its past experiences to continually optimize in an autonomous manner. That's why we need intelligence in this network. So very briefly, how does a typical cellular system look like nowadays? You have a bunch of base stations which are trying to communicate with your mobile phones and their objective is to maximize the coverage, the area that they cover, at the same time, minimize the interference that they cause to one another. So you have to maximize the capacity and the coverage at the same time. In order to do that, we deploy the network. Of course, it's not that symmetrical as it looks in this diagram. But once we have deployed it, either we do drive testing. We have uh, highly equipped vehicles that we drive along the roads as well as paths in order to gather a lot of network parameter statistics or key performance indicators as well as user reports, the reports generated by your mobile phone about their experience of the network. And all this information goes into a database where some experts, they do performance analysis to identify the areas of improvement. And then there are some other experts who work very hard in order to optimize certain parameters in the network, for example, the angles of the antennas. And these parameters are either directly uploaded to the network or you have to send engineers which rise up on the, these high towers and then adjust the parameters in the network. You can see that this is a slow and inefficient system. This cannot respond to very dynamic changes in the network that are arising. For example, as we have all gathered in this room, there are so many different mobile devices which need wireless connectivity. But network cannot adopt to this opportunity or this scenario in order to optimize its configuration because of this long cycle of optimization how things can change if we bring in artificial intelligence into the network. First of all, you would not need any drive testing because all of the performance metrics, they will be gathered continuously and automatically. Right? You do not need to have these performance analysis experts. You can have artificial intelligence modules which will do this analysis. You will have optimization algorithms which will actually optimize it online and then these parameters, they can be directly fed into the network. All of these features you can see save a lot of cost. So it improves the running cost of the network. So operators can provide you the same service with much less cost. So is this enough? That's not enough. The network has to still continually learn and improve its performance. So three important entities which are involved here is the network, the devices, as well as the users of those devices. So you have to implement such a cycle where you continually measure the network performance, as was shown in the video as well. You have to understand the context of this mobile data uh, delivery in terms of user context, in terms of network context. And then you have to intelligently choose appropriate actions that need to be taken. And you have to automate those actions where necessary in order to improve the performance of the network. So sometimes when network will take some decisions, they will be good. Sometimes they will not improve the performance. So network has to continually learn and update its, its strategies. So if this cycle continues and network continually improves its performance, you will get better and better performance which will meet, meet the 5G targets. So in short, the network combined with this intelligence that we are providing into the network provides us a self-organizing network. So what is self-organization? Self-organization is very old phenomena. It's already around us in terms of different species. One example is this flock of cranes, common cranes, which fly very long distances. In order to optimize their flight, it has been shown that they form this V formation, which can improve their flight efficiency by 70%. How do they do that? Do they have a common leader which, which tells them to do this? No, they do it in a distributed manner by taking some local actions in order to maintain cohesion, separation, and alignment 
on an individual cranes basis by doing these local operations they can form this specific flight formation which can improve their flight efficiency can we learn from this system and adopt it in our cellular system cellular system is a bunch of base stations which are trying to optimize those parameters so you can say that these base stations they have an objective they have to minimize the interference in the network just like those cranes they have to minimize the drag that they face so that their flight efficiency is improved and they can travel long distances. So just like we can create an analogy, so common cranes are just like base stations in our network. Flight attributes are the antenna parameters in those base stations because they control the interference in the system. The operation of flying is just like the operation of operating a network. Flight efficiency is spectral efficiency and air drag is the interference that we are trying to combat. So the problem of this flight of flock of cranes can be converted into a problem of a system of base stations that need to optimize itself using the antenna tilts in order to minimize the interference in the system. You can see that we can learn from a natural system, adopt it into an artificial system, a man-made system in order to create some intelligence. So how this design works? So we start with a big objective. We try to identify a simpler goal which supports this big objective and then we try to identify some local distributed functions that each individual component can do in order to achieve the simpler goal and in turn that big objective. So in, in the example of this flock of cranes, the big objective was to improve flight efficiency and the simpler goal that they designed for themselves was to keep a V formation because it can be shown that this V formation improves the flight efficiency by 70%. How do they maintain this V formation? By three simple <coughs> operations that each crane does locally, which is maintain a cohesion, a specific separation, and a specific alignment in <coughs> their flight. And in a cellular system, this big objective can be the improvement in the network efficiency, can be achieved by a simpler goal of interference management, and that interference can be managed by controlling the antenna tilts and antenna angles. It's just like controlling the angle of a torch in order to make sure that it shines on the place where the light is needed. So there are many tools. So some of those tools are coming from the intelligence or learning area. So you can have supervised learning where you can interrupt and teach the network that this is a good decision, this is a bad decision. You can have unsupervised learning where the network adopts some reward and uh, some investment functions and continually improves its performance. On the other hand, we need to have optimization methods which take in some parameters, take some constraints and then try to find the most optimum set of parameters which will improve the performance of the network. Just one graph, not too scientific, don't worry about the details on the graph. What we want to show, does it work? So on the x-axis you have throughput efficiency. In simple words, it tells us how fast the data is transmitted for the given bandwidth that we are given. On the y-axis, we show the so-called CDF, which tells us that what fraction of users is enjoying a good service. So a system which is towards the right-hand side, any system, which any graph which is as right as possible will be a good system. You can see if we fix the antenna tilts, the performance is mediocre, acceptable. But if we do self-organization of the tilts, then we get the best performance that we have. And the reason for that one is that by self-organization, you can always adopt your parameters for that given scenario that you're dealing with. For a fixed tilt, you can design it for the most common scenario, but whenever situation will change away from that, you will be doing a suboptimum design. So how much intelligence we should have and how much intelligence we should target? Are we really pushing the limits? You are aware of some systems which are now being taught to say no, which are being taught to disobey your commands. So do we want to go to those limits? Of course, if you are trying to teach them to say no to a specific set of, of, a set of commands or a specific set of situations, then it's fine because you are in control. You are telling them, where to say no and where to say yes. However, if you are giving them a decision-making power and you are also teaching them to occasionally disobey, 
and not listen to your commands, then we are treading into a dangerous territory. Okay, so maybe the network does not want to listen to me anymore. Yes, I hope it is still allows me to at least have one more slide to say thank you to you all.